In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some introductory basic beginner methods that you can use to mod your Arcade 1UP pinball machines with a PC and run your own Steam games, Visual Pinball X games, or even Future Pinball. Basically, whatever pinball games you want to play on a PC, you can do that with these mods. And if you don't like these mods, I got some more advanced level mods that'll give you some more bells and whistles later on down the line. So make sure you're subscribed and tuned into the channel for future updates for those videos when they drop. But first, let's learn about this. Now, as a disclaimer, let me first tell you that I don't think you should go out and spend $600 on an arcade one-up pinball machine with the only intention to gut it and mod it. Uh, this was actually a mod out of necessity, in my opinion, because unfortunately, bad luck, uh, my solenoids, the relay board, and everything that came in on this stock arcade one-up machine, well, they just went kaput on me. And my on and off switch, that died on me too, so I really had no way to actually enjoy the haptic feedback anymore. And then I got to thinking, I was like, well, arcade one-up has made mention that they potentially, potentially might in the future have some sort of online capabilities and online download packs. But then I was like, I already own every single one of these Zen Studios pinball games on Steam. Do I really want to double dip just so I can play it on this machine? And the answer to that question was no. So I said, hey, wait a minute, I already have all the know-how and the components around to where I can make this a dedicated V-Pin using most of the stock components on the Arcade 1UP machine as itself. So without further ado, let me show you the bare bones basic starter kit, so to speak, that you will need to mod this. First, you'll need a cabinet code from Zen. To do this, simply fill out the form on the website shown here. They will then email you back asking for an image of your cabinet. Simply take a picture of your machine and then email it back to them. Zen Studios will then email you back once again a cabinet code that you will enter in the cabinet settings in FX3 that allows you to make changes to the DMD and back glass displays. You will also need a computer capable of running Steam and FX3 that has at least two output display options. Now you can go as crazy as you want and you can spend a lot of money modding these pinball machines or you can spend very little. Today we'll focus on spending the least amount possible and I'll show you more advanced options in other videos. Let me show you the components I use to mod my machine. All right, let me give you the tour and the overview of how everything is set up and connected for this basic introductory mod. Like I said, I will be doing different videos for different levels of advanced modding. Um, you can make this as difficult or as easy as you possibly want. It just really depends on what features and functions you care the most about. Um, you can spend a ton of money modding these things or you can spend very little money modding these things. It's completely up to you and I'll kind of try to showcase different methods and options that way you can choose what's best for you. So this one right here though, this is the bare bones, bare essential, if all you care about is just playing as many games as possible and having the best visual experience, then that is the goal of this beginner mod. So first and foremost, go ahead and pop this up so you can see a little bit about what's going on inside. So I have a Dell Optiplex 9020 small form factor PC inside this cabinet just to kind of show you, yes, you can technically put a PC inside the base of the cabinet. However, that is not going to be its permanent home for me. I'm honestly going to mount this on the underside of the cabinet body because it's got a nice little recessed panel and it'll be nice and tucked away, but I'll still have easy access to the PC. You will need a PC or a laptop of some sorts to be able to do this mod. I saw somebody comment something like, oh, I hope uh, his teaser image is not in regards to a PC because I don't like PC modding. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to burst your bubble if you thought for somehow, some way, that magically the Arcade 1UP PCB that is Android based was just gonna be able to magically allow me to touch two wires together and unlock the entire Zen Studios pinball library. Hate to burst your bubble, that's not a realistic expectation. I already own all these games on Steam. That's part of the reason why I did this. The other secondary reason that I mentioned previously was my solenoids and my haptic feedback of the stock Marvel cabinet, they stopped. The relay board just completely stopped transmitting power, my toggle switch, my power button stopped working. I had no way to actually get those solenoids to work anymore on my cabinet. So removed everything, gutted it completely, and that's why I've got all this space. But again, PC is not gonna live here because for a future video, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing for haptics and that type of thing and all that stuff is gonna reside in here. But regardless, first things first, we have a very generic zero delay encoder. That's what we're using to power our buttons. So when I push the button, 
over here. No delay, works like a charm. Button there, got my exit button. Uh, this is, you know, toggling for my menus and then my ball launch. Now, one thing to note about the ball launch, pop this down so you can see better, is the ball launch is, you know, pressure sensitive. So I can hit it just a little bit or I can hold it, hit it hard and actually do skill shots. But regardless, getting distracted, let's go back in here because I am using the stock arcade one up 24 inch monitor. And the way I'm accomplishing that is I am using this VS display LCD controller board. Now this is not a standard one that people have been using for arcade one up mods in the past. This one actually is different and it is suited specifically for the 24 inch monitor. I hooked it up very similar to the same arcade one up mods we've done in the past. It does come with a bunch of extra cords and accessories. They're a little bit daunting. You don't need any of them. All you need to do is take your wire, your LVDS connection from the back of the monitor, this inverter connection. You're going to plug your inverter right here. You're going to plug your LVDS cable into this controller board with the red wires facing that direction. I've got the ground mounted to the back side of the monitor in an existing hole. I literally just cut out a piece of cardboard that came, you know, shipped the controller board in double-sided tape it to the back of the monitor. I've got my power supply back here, powering the LCD controller board. I've got the HDMI cable right there for my screen display. And then of course we have the controller board over here. That way I can change settings like brightness, contrast, and all those type of things, which is nice because the stock monitor does have a little bit of muted colors, but I was able to bring out a lot of color and vibrancy by tweaking those. Secondary, you'll notice that I have the back glass completely full screen. Lower this so we get less of a glare. There we go. So I've got full screen on the back glass there. Previously, the stock Arcade 1UP monitor there, um, just to maintain aspect ratio, they had it compressed to where it was all, you know, not completely filling the screen. I've stretched it completely thanks to the um, ability of the cabinet mode in steam so i can tweak this i can stretch it i make it small i can lower higher the resolution it's great stock speakers and everything around back show you how everything is hooked up all right so the back of the back box i've taken out the back plate so you can see everything easier this is really just to show you that nothing has changed back here everything is still stock so i've got an hdmi cable running to the secondary monitor that goes down to my pc stock connections that we already had on our arcade one up cabinet we've got you know our cable there for power we've got our secondary cable to power the illuminated back box and then we have our speaker so we got these two speakers everything is stock everything nothing's been changed here we go down we kind of see into the back of the cabinet so what i've done for power this was the stock plug kind of you know fed through here i've just got it taken out right now for easier access so I can show you things. But what I did was I took this Y barrel plug. So I needed a way to power up the LCD controller for the 24 inch play field. And I also needed to power up the back box, the stock power. So this cable right here that was normally going into your power supply and you would plug into the wall. Instead, I plugged it into one end to the barrel splitter and I've got it plugged into the stock power supply. So you hear everything die right there. And the other end goes into the back of the LCD controller to power up the monitor. So once so again, stock arcade one up power supply. Cord comes up here, feeds into the Y splitter. One end goes to the stock cable that I have feeding up to the back box, then plugs up here. The other end goes into the back of the LCD controller to power that up so I can use the stock playfield monitor. And again, this is just my power cable from the back of the PC going down into the switch. Again, don't have to use this. You can plug these two outlets into the wall if you wish, just whatever is most convenient for you. So anytime you're doing PC mods, I always suggest people get one of these little USB wireless keyboard. Allows you to have a keyboard as well as a mouse functionality up here. Um, easily turn the volume up and down on your PC. 
mute it, um, navigate menus with the arrow key or the mouse. I mean, it's just very easy to use this as opposed to the onboard buttons, but you know, whatever, whatever suits your fancy, but this little cheap device will save you headache and heartache of having to drag out a mouse and a keyboard anytime you're doing anything with a PC inside of a cabinet. Coming back to the controls, let me explain this a little more for people that just completely don't know anything about modding. So the zero delay encoder hooked up via USB to the PC. All I've literally done is took the existing arcade one up buttons, unplugged them from the stock PCB and the controller and everything that was right here, and then plugged them into the zero delay encoder. Once they got recognized on the computer, then I simply program them using joy to key to whatever inputs and configuration I want. So right now, physical plunger, it's there, but it doesn't work. These don't take analog signals. So again, I'll show you how to use this in a later mod, but right now we've got flippers. We've got launch down here on the front. I've got an exit button and enter button. These also flippers let me go up and down on the menus. This lets me go left and right. And this lets me, you know, select things. You can change this completely. You can actually add more buttons. In fact, that's what I'm going to show you next, because I'm going to add a nudge button over here and a nudge button over here by physically drilling into the cabinet, adding two more buttons and then connecting them to the encoder because, well, it's just much more easier to navigate the menus with those extra buttons. Plus me personally, I like to have the nudge buttons as well as having the ability to physically nudge the machine. Right now, we do not have the accelerometer in here anymore, so we don't have any physical nudging of the machine, but we will be able to have digital nudging, so to speak. So I'll be able to nudge the table left, right, and forward with the onboard buttons. All right, we got the nudge buttons installed. These are literally two old arcade one-up buttons that I pulled from an NBA Jam cabinet after I modded and upgraded those buttons. Like I said, you don't have to use arcade one-up stock buttons. You can interchange and swap these out with whatever you see fit. But for the sake of simplicity, like I said, we we're reusing old all arcade one up stock components. So that's what I went with, plugged it into the USB encoder, everything's hunky dory. So now, as you can see, we've got flippers, right, left, and then I've got left nudge, and I've got right nudge, and then I've got front nudge as well. So I can sit here and nudge this machine to death until I get my tilt, but we now have full control over our nudging since we did lose that accelerometer. Now I will show you in a later video how you can mod this and get your physical nudging back, get an accelerometer back in this machine, as well as have your physical plunger working again in FX3, as well as other games you should wish to play on your I mean, pinball. I mentioned it earlier, but this is Joy to Key running in the background. Um, this is what tells the USB encoder what buttons is corresponding. So when I hit the flipper, I see it lights up when I hit the flipper. And what I had to do is I basically went in there, clicked on it, told it what command I want to correspond with each button. So this is, you know, my right flipper. It's corresponding with a keyboard input of a right shift and a down arrow that lets me also navigate the menus. Same thing with my nudge buttons. There's my right nudge, my left nudge, and then like I said my escape button. My front button where I can also do nudging as well as whatever commands I want to, you know, see fit and assign it to. So very handy tool. However, in a future mod, we will be using something different than Joy to Key. So if you don't like Joy to Key, don't worry. I've got a different solution for your encoding and your input command. Now, this part is only if you specifically want to follow exactly everything I did as far as setting up the back glass and stretching it, making it full screen on FX3. So this is the way I've got my monitor set up. I've got the back glass stack on top of my main play field monitor. And if you go ahead and see, hit identify here, it should tell you, yep, one and two. So this is my main play field. Obviously this is the back glass. I've got this set up as my default screen, this main play field area here. Now the resolution for this screen is 1920 by 1080 P and I believe the back glass is 800 by 480. Everything you need to make sure Everything is scaled 100%. The dimensions and everything I have for FX3 that will correspond to where you need to position this for your dot matrix to have everything fill out this entire screen because without it, you'll just be guessing as far as where you need to place that second screen. As long as you stack your second monitor on top 
here in the display settings in Windows and you use the same settings I'm showing here, then you'll be good to go. All right, to wrap things up, what did we gain and what did we lose? For starters, let's start with what we lost. So we lost our accelerometer, our physical ability to move the machine and move the ball on the play field. We lost our physical plunger and well, we lost the arcade one up PCB. So if you had some crazy high scores on your arcade one up PCB, uh, you know, sorry about your luck because they're obviously not going to transfer over onto your PC. What did we gain? So we went from 720p resolution to 1080p resolution because that stock arcade one up PCB was relegated to only outputting 720p because it's that Android hardware and everything. However, the screen is capable of 1080p and we are utilizing it to its fullest capability. So we're getting 1080p, 60 frames per second on the play field. We're able to use the stock play field and secondary screen on the arcade one up machine, as well as we have now gained the ability to stretch the image on the DMD, whereas the Factory settings would not allow you to tweak that any way, shape, or form, so you're kind of stuck with that slender aspect ratio. We also gained all sorts of new control configurations for not only our monitor, but the games themselves, thanks to the PC robustness and the application of Steam and FX3. I can change camera angles. I can do all sorts of different tweaks. We also added two physical nudge buttons. Now that is not a requirement, but it does make things handy since we did lose our accelerometer, but it also makes things very convenient when we're navigating the menus and toggling up and down the menus with our flippers and our new nudge buttons. Again, you don't have to add the nudge buttons, but for me personally, it was just something that would seem like a no brainer. However, in the future, again I will show you how to regain what we have lost so we also did lose our haptic feedback but again at the beginning of this video that really wasn't a loss for me because I essentially already lost it but in a future video I will add new haptics to this machine I'll show you how to do that I will show you how to get the accelerometer back in here as well as get a physical plunger back in there so we're gonna get everything we lost back in future videos so make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for that as well as we will also be replacing the stock back glass. So we've got this, you know, nice little illuminated back box, but since we've got so many games we can play on here, it just makes sense to change that out to a monitor as well. That way we can display something, you know, more in tune with the game we're actually playing. So if I'm playing something like ET on my play field here, I can have an ET image up here on a new monitor as well as, you know, ET scoring going on on the DMD. So hope you guys found this educational, informative. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. Again, as always, I'll put all the product information, links, all the need to know information down in the video description box below for you. And guys, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for watching. It really means a lot.